The circular economy presents an opportunity to transform our current linear system into one that's good for business, people and the environment. But how can we explain all of what the circular economy has to offer? Well, we designed three core principles all driven by design. And in this video, we'll summarise the third one, regenerate nature. The third principle of the circular economy is firmly embedded in the natural world. And the neat thing is, it's simple to understand. Let's start with the basics. When trees drop their leaves, no one complains that they make a mess or litter the forest. And we all know the reason why. The leaves eventually break down and add value to the forest as a whole. And without this natural detritus, the forest wouldn't prosper. They play their part in the forest's natural cycle of regeneration. So how do we apply this principle to the way that we do things? Well, we don't just want to maintain the biosphere as it is or minimise the problems we're creating. We want to regenerate it and leave the world in a better place than we found it. Let's find out how we do that. Orongo Station in New Zealand managed to turn around their underperforming land to become regenerative in a period of 20 years. This 3,000 acre coastal farm had been overgrazed and deforested and with that came soil erosion and an uncertain future. The owners researched the land to come up with solutions and this led to the establishment of wetland areas to enhance habitats, designing steeper slopes so that birds could nest in peace from invasive predators, the replanting of 600,000 suitable trees and, well, much more besides. The result is a thriving landscape, a much more productive farm and the farm has also made sure to give greater access to local Maori. And we can apply circular principles to the ocean as well. Greenwave is a network of regenerative ocean farmers. They farm by using a lattice of ropes and baskets to harvest shellfish and seaweed in a nature positive way. The ingredients they harvest are used for food, fertilizer, animal feed and bioplastics, and their practices restore marine ecosystems. It's regenerative. So applying regenerative food growing practices helps build up soil health, which in turn helps it absorb more carbon from the atmosphere and soak up more water. So whether it's on the land or the ocean, we produce healthier food, healthier environments, and we do it in a way that helps tackle climate change and encourages greater biodiversity. Oh, and by the way, all of this is done whilst eliminating synthetic chemical inputs like pesticides and fertilizers, and by increasing the diversity of crops. The third principle can also be applied in our cities. We can create regenerative built environment where buildings clean water and produce more energy than they consume. Green facades provide habitats for wildlife and can also help keep the building cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Take this city hall in Venlo. The north facade comprises over 100 plant varieties to improve the air quality outside the building. This not only converts carbon dioxide to oxygen, but it also filters particulates and it provides noise insulation and creates a habitat for birds and insects. An interior green wall adds moisture to the air inside the building and rainwater is collected on the roof then filtered through a reed bank in order to help flush the toilets. Venlo City Hall is the perfect example of a building designed to give more than it takes, much like a forest. <laughs>